Hey everyone, I'm Katie from Addicted to DIY and today I'm going to be showing you how to make a collapsible wooden chair. So I'm partnering with my friends from Inventables to show you how I designed and built this project using my X-Carve CNC. What I love about this chair is that it is lightweight, it's compact, and you can use it for extra seating around your fireplace, you can use it at the beach or the lake, whatever you like. The rails of this chair have a slight radius to them, which I designed in SketchUp. I exported the file in DXF format and imported it into Easel. There was a learning curve involved, as the file doesn't transfer over to Easel exactly the way it was designed in SketchUp, but after a few more redesigns, some wasted wood, and working out the problem, I was able to get the whole design the way I wanted it. I've uploaded this project into the Inventables project library, so all you have to do is open it and carve the project. You can find the link in the description below. I used 1x6 cedar boards for this project, which I cut down to 29 inches long, then secured to my wasteboard. I set up the machine to the home position and got it ready to carve. I used an 8th inch down cut bit for this carve. While the rail pieces were carving, I got started cutting down the wood for the seat and back slats. I cut them to 18 inches long on my miter saw, then moved over to my table saw. There I ripped the boards down into 1x2 sticks. You'll need 14 of them for this project. Back at my work table, I grabbed the carved rail pieces and started sanding them down with 220 grit sandpaper, slightly rounding off the sharp edges to prevent the wood from splintering. To clean up the notches, I used sandpaper wrapped around a piece of scrap wood. I also sanded down all of the slats for the chair back and seat, as well as the supports for the seat. To attach the back slats, I drilled countersunk holes 3 8 inch in from each end of the slats and centered over the wood. I set them in each of the notches with the ends flush with the rails of the chair. I attached them with 1 and a quarter inch outdoor screws. The rails of the chair bottom will sit inside the rails of the chair back, so the slats will have an approximate overhang of 3 quarters of an inch on each end. I verified the overhang with my multi-mark tool, and then marked all of the slats where I would be drilling the holes. For this, it was 1 and 1 8 inch in from each end, and 3 quarters inch up from each edge. I drilled countersunk holes into each end where I had made my marks and then got started attaching them. I attached the first and last slats to set the overall gap between the rails and then evened up the rest of the slats with my multi-mark tool and then attached them with one and a quarter inch outdoor screws. The trickiest part of this whole build is deciding where to attach the supports for the seat. I played around with the angles and seat height a bit and finally settled on a placement I liked. Essentially what I did was I put the chair front and back together and used one of the extra slats as a block to set the gap. To make this easy on you, I measured the placement of each. The support that goes on the back side of the rails for the chair back is attached approximately 11 and 3 quarters inches up from the bottom of the rails. The support that goes on the front side of the rails for the chair back 
is attached approximately seven and a half inches up from the bottom of the rails. I marked the placement of the supports with a pencil and then drilled the pilot holes, two in each end. I drilled pilot holes into each end of the front support and attached it to the rails with one and a quarter inch screws. I followed these same steps for the support on the back side of the chair and attached it with screws. With the supports attached, the chair is done. This was my second try at building this chair and I'm so happy that the tweaks I made in the design made it all work. Version 1.0 worked great in chair form but wouldn't fit together when I tried to fit the pieces together to stow away. Now the chair can be set up and used for relaxing and then quickly and easily put away and stored without taking up hardly any space. The cedar is super lightweight and soft, so the weight limit of the chair may not be super high, though it did manage to support me without breaking into pieces. I'm thinking that making these out of white oak would make them super durable for both outdoor use and also support more weight. The weight of the chair will be a bit heavier, but not too bad considering the design. Either way, I can't wait to make more of these and use them as extra seating around our fire pit and maybe even make some as Christmas gifts this year. Special thanks to my friends from Inventables for partnering with me on this project today. For more tutorials just like this one, make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so that you'll be alerted every time I publish a new video. Also, I've queued up a few other videos that I think you might enjoy. Thanks so much for watching.